I built over 50 Shopify stores and in order to make this process easier, I come up with three things that you want to get done in order to make this process actually very seamless. Uh, number one is actually gathering your assets, gathering literally everything, right? From the get go, your assets are gonna be the foundational elements of your website. It's the same as if you were building a storefront, you know, physical storefront, right? You need the bricks, you need the wood, you need the clothing racks, you need the actual physical inventory in place. So all these things will include things like your logo, which is going to act as a visual representation of your brand. It's going to be, make it instantly recognizable to your audience. Obviously colors and fonts, these are gonna to contribute to the overall aesthetic of the website. Also the personality of the brand, right? Depending on the fonts and some of the colors, you can actually evoke certain emotions or associations. A big thing when, we come to, when it comes to assets is your product images, right? This can play a crucial role in enticing your customers and providing them with a clear understanding of what your product actually is. And I cannot stress this enough, you don't need the highest fanciest photography out there you can take really good product photography with just your iphone and just really good lighting now descriptions should be informative engaging and persuasive right you need to be able to guide your potential customers towards making an actual purchase providing all the necessary information that they need to know about that particular product and then up next is product categories, right? Help your customers find your products easier on your website by thinking about how am I going to categorize these products on my store, on my navigation, on my footer navigation, and other places. Now, when we think, think about different assets, you also gotta think about your about section. I think an about page is absolutely crucial. And I think a lot of people tend to put very generic type verbiage on, on your about section. And I think this is really an opportunity for you to actually tell your brand story, to actually connect with your audience on a personal level and actually establish trust. And that's the only purpose of the about page is to do those things. And more importantly, to establish trust, right? If I go to an about page and it looks like it's written by ChatGPT and it's just a bunch of nonsense and it doesn't really talk about you and who you are and and why should I be buying from you, probably not gonna trust you as much as you know someone who's actually given me the real version of who they are and why they started this. Beyond this, contact information, obviously, you want to ensure the customers can easily reach out to you with any questions or concerns they may have, right? Other things like trust indicators, such as customer testimonials, security badges, guarantees, all these things instill confidence in potential buyers. Now, tactical move, things that is something that I do for every single store that I build. I go to canva.com, you can search brand kit right here and you see brand kit templates. These are templates that are already generated by someone else. All you have to do is plop in your information right within here. So we look at this one, for example, we can click on customize this template and very easily you can get that step number one, right? Which is getting your logo, your colors and your fonts all into one place, a single document that you or anyone else in the team can kind of come back to and refer. This is going to make your actual next step a lot easier because you visually will have something in place that will represent your brand, your website, your social media, like this right here. I look at this and I should be able to see all these same things that I have in here on my website, on my socials and everywhere else. You can actually expand on this, right? You can actually, not just have your visual elements in here, but you can keep expanding on it, maybe make multiple pages, talk about your values, the tone of voice that you use for your customers. You can even have brand inspiration. You can talk about your competition all right within here. So you can actually expand this and make it a very robust type of document. But at the very least, just use this right here, fonts, colors, and your logos. Now, after I'm done gathering all my assets and having all the photography sessions that I need to have, having all the colors, all the fonts, everything picked out, the next thing, the next most important thing in this process of creating a Shopify store is selecting the right theme that has the right features for your store, right? And again, selecting the right theme is the same thing as, you know, selecting the, the interior design for your physical store. It's going to set the tone and it's gonna set the atmosphere, right? For the customer's experience. That feeling that they get when they land on your website, it's something that's important and sometimes it's not quantifiable, right? By, by any sort of report or audit that people do. That feeling that people get is important. And that feeling a lot of times comes from just having a theme 
that is very unique. And obviously you need to manipulate the theme, right? To make it unique for your store. But by doing this, you're gonna create something truly special. My recommendation is always, if you watch this channel, is installing multiple theme options in the back end. Do the theme trials. And that way you can actually experiment with different aesthetics. You can experiment with different functionalities. And you can ultimately choose a theme that actually aligns with your brand identity. and actually resonates with your target audience a little bit better. Maybe has some features included within the theme that you may need to get an app for. You don't need that app anymore because it's already built in within this theme. So you need to consider the features that you want to incorporate into your website to enhance user experience and to drive engagement, right? You know, things like chat, real-time chat communication and support, trust badges on your homepage and product page, wish list functionality, upsells right there within the cart. You know, these are all things that it's going to promote an easier user experience and a better user experience overall. And it's gonna maximize your revenue potential. So that's why selecting a theme is very important. Right, and it's the, it's the difference between, for example, I have enterprise here. If I go to the cart page or the drawer card that shows up in here, I have things like you may also like, right? It's like an upsell built in right here within my cart versus if I go to my Dawn theme, if I go to my cart, it just opens up a cart page. I don't have the option for the drawer. There's no optimization there for upsells right there within my cart for the Dawn theme. So you see the difference. You have to install the theme trial in order to get a sense for all the little nuances and little details that you can actually do within that theme. Hey, if you are liking this video so far, please consider liking and clicking on that subscribe button. Obviously after installing that, you want to customize your website, right? According to what you created in step one, according to your brand's personality, according to your guidelines, right? Ensuring that consistency is brought over from that into the website, the tone, the messaging, all these things are gonna be very important. But prioritizing both that visual aspect and the functionality, you can actually create a seamless and enjoyable browsing experience for all of your customers. And that's what really what we're trying to drive in here. It's like step number one is figure out sort of like your look and feel. Step number two is figure out the functionality of the theme. And step number three is going to be those little details with analytics, with SEO, with email strategies, right? All these things that sort of come after you actually design your website, but are still part of, I think, the process overall. Because if you don't have these things in place, you're not gonna have a good user experience at the end of the day. So once your website is visually appealing and the functionality is robust, it's essential to actually focus on driving traffic, right? And conversions, like all these things are gonna be important. And implementing tools like Google Analytics 4, Microsoft Clarity, and I would say Triple Well, this will allow you to track and analyze user behavior. It's gonna gain, you're gonna gain insight into your website performance. You're gonna know exactly how your customers are using your website and make data-driven decisions, right? At some point, you have to stop relying on what's considered best practices and look into your data and look at your customer's behavior and make changes based off of that. And you may be thinking right now, these steps are pretty easy, but at the same time, you don't want to do these steps. You want someone else to take care of it. That's why we created the website VIP day. If you're interested in us designing your website, 24 hours, click the link below. Now, besides the analytic tools that you should implement to your, into your site, optimizing your website for search engines, right? By incorporating relevant keywords, meta tag, alt tag, for all of your images. These are all gonna be things that you need to make sure that you do in the back end. Writing compelling product descriptions, not only to inform, but also to contribute, right, to better search engine rankings. Something that I'm, I'm finding myself repeating over and over when I'm, I'm doing audits on Shopify stores is you need to create a description of your actual collection. And inside of that collection description, you can actually insert a lot of different keywords based on a group of products that you already have in your store. So for example, if you're selling maxi dresses, the fact that you can include things like cute maxi dresses, boutique maxi dresses, red maxi dresses, all within the description of that collection is gonna make it super powerful for your store to potentially rank right on search engines. Now, one of the last things that I want you to do is think about your email strategy. Think about leveraging pop-ups, automations to actually capture lead, nurture relationships, and again, keep driving conversions. Personalized and targeted emails can actually significantly impact purchase decisions. It can turn just random visitors into actual loyal customers. Again, by combining SEO best practices, analytic tools, and creating some email strategies behind things like add to cart or cart abandonment, you're going to create a very holistic approach to your marketing. You can actually maximize your website's visibility and profitability. So again, gather your assets, choose the right theme and features, and implement SEO analytics and email strategies. You can create a very compelling and effective storefront for your Shopify store. Okay, now that you know you have all these, these 
steps, the one, the two, and the three, I recommend you check out this next video, which will break down one of these steps for you.